I kind of don't want to do this video. But I did say I'd do more negative reviews. But it isn't just because it's a negative review. It's because I don't want to give this a negative review. Also, I just want to clarify here my moratorium on spoilers. If something has a theatrical release, whilst it's there, don't do spoilers if you can avoid it. It's generally where I tend to do the split videos. Once it's on streaming, it's fair game after maybe a couple of weeks. Not everyone can get to a cinema as easily. Don't assume that everyone can and just spoil it because it's been out there for a few weeks. Wait until it's been on the streaming for a bit. Most people have streaming services. If it's already on streaming, give it a month or so at least. And with streaming stuff, I'll probably tend to do spoiler warnings midway through or something a lot more. I'm not going to do that for this. I think the moratorium has passed anyway, but I wouldn't do it because I want to tell people why this film is bad and you shouldn't watch it. And again, I hate doing that. So let's talk about The Matrix Resurrections, directed by Lana Wachowski, who wrote it alongside Alexander Heman and David Mitchell. It stars Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, Yaya Abdul Mateen II, that's a complex name to say, Jonathan Groff and Jessica Henwick. And like I say, I don't like this film. I do want to give some praise up front. And that is mostly that it has ideas. I always praise a film that has ideas. I praise it a lot more when it actually does something worthwhile with them. I think the thing that annoys me and upsets me most about this film is that there was so much potential. If they'd have been more creative, if they'd have been more ambitious, if they'd have put a lot more time and effort and, dare I say it, care and even love into the production, those ideas would have been great to see, fully realised and actualised. But instead we got this soulless cash grab of a film. I love the idea in the setup, the early part of the film where we're talking about how he's being dragged back into making a new entry into the game series, The Matrix. Because the idea is that maybe it was all made up. This guy was going through a lot of issues and was super depressed, nearly ended his life and made games about this fictional world where he basically did a Mary Sue. He self-inserted as the hero. And I don't know if there's a male version of that. Someone tell me in the comments. Let me, let me know what the male equivalent of Mary Suing is. But he does that, and obviously he's the hero, and he's really successful. And his business partner is more the business side. He's the creative side, which you'll often find in these kind of situations. So he's, you know, making this game series, and he's going to do the next one. But everyone's pushing him to do it. He doesn't want to. Are you getting what's happening here? He doesn't want to make another one, but the studio will go ahead and do it without him. So it's better he's at the helm and directing this game. Are you with me? Like, the idea is great, but this film is definitely black and white. It's not grey. The first three are grey. Well, they're often very green, but they're grey. There's interpretation. There is bringing your own situation to it. I've talked before on various videos about how I love applicability over allegory. And just as a refresher or for anyone who hasn't watched any time I've talked about it before, applicability is you can go in with your life experiences and say, oh, that speaks to me on this level. But someone else with different life experiences can say, oh, that speaks to me on this level. How, for example, very Many of us did not get that the original Matrix, at least, not so much perhaps the sequels in, in many ways, but was very much a trans allegory. You look at it now and you're like, yes, of course, because we're aware of it, because they have both transitioned. But many of us didn't spot it. But if you had that life experience, you probably would have. But here, this is allegory. This is them saying, this is what it means. This is what you're taking away from this. Lana and Lily did not want to do another Matrix, and the studio were going to do one anyway, and Lana was like, I'll take one for the team. It just is a soulless cash grab. I was so excited to see this. The trailers look great, but a lot of the moments in the trailers are basically from right at the start and right at the end. Most of them are. They're just sandwiches, really. Well, not right at the end, but you get the idea. 
the coolest moments tend to come early on. And this is more an issue with what I was looking at. I can't remember what source it was, but it, I was looking at the cast list and it gave Abdul Nadeen's credit as Morpheus slash Agent Smith. So that bit was already spoiled before I watched it, but then I, I watched it and it's in the first few minutes anyway. He's not Morpheus. He's not Morpheus. He's a Smith in this weird loop which is very similar to parts of the first film I even went oh the heart of the city side he's a weird smith from there that has Morpheus's engrams I guess encoded on him still don't fully understand but he's a program he's not Morpheus they haven't just recast it and I guess I like that I appreciate that because it's not just the same character with Jonathan Groff however it's clearly meant to be smith with obviously the, the the Neo parts added to him, which is why he's a bit different. And I will say, again, giving a, a positive, a bit of praise here, the performance that Jonathan Groff gives is great. He looked at Hugo Weaving's performance, but he did look at other sources for inspiration of how to portray the character. He didn't want to just copy there are moments where he is but that's because and this is going to lead into another negative now it kind of made sense to because i've always said in the past i don't like to watch or read or whatever other people's reviews before i do my own but i didn't know i was going to make this video up front and i was like is it worth me spending my money on and one review i did watch off a source i respect which is why i had trepidation going into the film now basically said do not put footage from a better film in your film because what will happen is people will go i could have been watching that like i said with a previous marvel thing the eternals there is a new black sheep in the matrix family it used to be revolutions people didn't like that and and i think to a degree also reloaded i don't think as many people love those as the original I agree mostly, but I think they're better than a lot of people gave them credit for. Maybe at some point I'll do a video on the whole Matrix previous quadrilogy. And yes, the Animatrix is canon, so it counts. But still, this is now the black sheep because everyone will now believe that the previous films were so much better. That might have been a subversive way of going, yeah, we're going to kill this franchise with this. And people will go, I'm not watching that one, but I'll watch the other ones. Maybe it was a great moment of subversion. If that was the case, then my opinion of this film has just gone up because it served its purpose well. However, I'm not entirely sure that that was intentional. I think it's a very positive side effect. But yeah, so this film just gives us a weird loop where we don't know what's meant to be going on and then we finally get it all dumped on us. Not like the previous ones where there was a lot of philosophy. It was very highbrow in many ways. And we can't talk about The Matrix without talking about fight scenes. There are some okay fight scenes earlier on. But once Thomas Anderson starts gaining his powers back, it's all the force push or whatever you want to call it. And the weirdest thing is, they have Chad Stahelski, Keanu Reeves' stunt double for a long time, including in the original Matrix films. He's also a stunt coordinator. He was also in one episode of Buffy as the guy with knives out his arms, whose name I forget. It was something of the Miquat clan. Again, someone tell me down in the comments below what it was. But he's a very accomplished fight dude, basically. And they just put him as a joke. Tiffany... Trinity's alternative version is married to the character who is played by the stunt guy for the guy who she really had a relationship with. I mean, even that's just a two on the nose joke. And oh, okay, it's it's clever if you're like, oh, I know exactly who that is. But calling him Chad, not even giving him a character name. But like I say, they had this guy. And I know everyone's much older now and maybe can't do all the fights like before. But at least do a bit more than just... Hur, hur. The fact he says I still know Kung Fu, I'm like, you don't, dude. I'm sorry. You've done a few throws, a few punches. But 
you're not anywhere near how impressive you were 20 odd years ago. And that's the sad bit. We're reminded now that these people are old and can't do it anymore. But the studio wanted to make it. And they signed on to try and do the best with what they had, I guess. Like, I love some of these people. Carrie Ann Moss was great in a lot of stuff I've seen her in. So I have respect for her. Keanu Reeves is just a dude. He may not be the greatest actor ever. Let's, let's all admit that right now. But he always does his best in a role. He always gives 100% to the performance. I don't believe in the idea of 110%. You can't get more than 100%. It's silly. So he always gives 100% and he does what he can with what he's got. I respect that. He gives a lot of money away to people who need it as well. Great. Love that. He's a dude. Jonathan Groff, great theatre actor. And it's good to see his face after really only getting to first be aware of him as Kristoff. And Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, great guy. I've liked the things I've seen him in, in general. I've not seen too much of him, but I've enjoyed his performances. Jessica Henwick, who for ages of the film, I'm like, why are you familiar? And again, it's like she gravitates towards not so good productions, but she's great with what she's got. Everyone here does the best with what they've got. It's just a shame that to, I don't know, go back to that wonderful phrase, you cannot polish a turd. Simple as. This was a nostalgia, soulless cash grab, and oh, I need to finish the video with one more thing. Well, two more things. I really enjoyed Neil Patrick Harris as the analyst. A great marriage somewhere between Smith and the architect. I enjoyed that. You know what I didn't love? New bullet time. And that's how I'm going to finish this video. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And I always like to end on a positive. This tells you how bad I think this was. I was streaming this. So when there were moments of this new bullet time, isn't it great? I was like, is the signal wonky? Do I need to reboot my router and everything? We call it a router over here. We don't say route, it's weird. A router is something you do with wood. Anyway, there is just so much wrong with this. How does what really kind of looks a bit janky still, like the, the little ripple effects look a bit janky now, but that still looks better than this After Effects plugin. That's what it is. New Bullet Time is just an After Effects plugin, or maybe, in fact, more likely a botch in the render. If something goes wrong during your rendering process, you probably would get weird floaty frames between. Fortunately, touch wood, I've not had that happen to me so far. But yeah, new bullet time is like, you've seen that meme of looking at something as a keyboard and it's like upgrade and then it's terrible and it's like, oh, go back. Th this is the epitome of that meme in this film. I did not like it. It was terrible. If this is supposed to be an improvement, I mean, again, maybe it's a stroke of genius. Maybe they're saying not everything new is better. And again, if that was their intent, well done. But again, I'm not sure it was. So, without any more ranting, because really I could go on for probably the entire length of the film. I did not like this. I actually, no, I'm going to finish on a positive. I was under the impression that the Naomi thing... Uh, the Jada Pinkett Smith was a glorified cameo, but she is actually a fully rounded character. Well, I don't know if a fully rounded character, but she she's not just a glorified cameo. She's in it a decent enough amount that it's justifiable. Fine. There we go. That's the positive to end on. But seriously, if you haven't seen The Matrix Resurrections, I hope this, I hope this video has convinced you not to. If you have... Please, again, another call to action. I don't normally do it, but why not? Three in one video. Let's make this worthwhile. Let me know your opinion on the film below. How much you hated it, what you hated most. And if you love this film, tell me when did your lobotomy happen? But that's all I'm going to say. So until next time, as always, thank you for watching and letting me rant. And take care. And don't watch this film.
Hurr.